Hi, I'm Carolise Trays. I'm the author of this book, The Final Choice and a Journalist. Late last year, I went to a freelance writing job and it was a meeting and there I heard a little bit about assisted dying and I came away from that meeting thinking, what is this that we're talking about? I knew that it would be in a binding referendum with this election, but little else. So I went on the journey. As part of that, I interviewed over 20 experts. So I talked to campaigners, I talked to lawyers, to doctors. I, I talked to those with terminal illnesses and disabilities. And I welcomed their input on the conversation, their perspective. I interviewed someone called Margaret Somerville, who has nine doctorates. She's a bioethicist from Australia. She said, this question that we are being asked in New Zealand at this time is the most important values decision of the 21st century. And that, uh, that importance was echoed through uh, interviews with the lawyers, the Queen's Council member, and others in the conversation. To get an idea of what good lawmaking practice actually looks like, one of the people I interviewed was Queen's Council member Grant Illingworth. And he took me through a, a couple of questions that we can ask to test if this law is indeed robust. So questions like, will the safeguards included be able to weed out those who shouldn't have access to this? Is the eligibility criteria, such as the one based on prognosis of six months, is it a reliable test? Is it a reliable uh, line in the sand that we definitely know this will be uh, the right person eligible? Or a question like, uh, is two doctors doing their best to assess for coercion a, a good enough protection to ensure that someone is not being pressured into this? So an interesting point talking about coercion that I found while researching some of these laws internationally is over in Oregon in the United States, they've legalized assisted suicide. So that's a form of assisted dying where you administer it yourself. So over there, it's legal. And what they found is that um, the average length that a doctor has a relationship with the patient, that relationship length from the beginning meeting of meeting the patient to the patient taking the dose, the average length is 10 to 14 weeks. And that's a pattern that, that's actually seen throughout the nearly or just above 13 jurisdictions that have legalized equivalent laws. Uh, to note, more than 30 have rejected this law and uh, around 13 have accepted it or a version of it. So some laws uh, contain euthanasia and assisted suicide. That's when the doctor administers that last dose or it's self-administered. And some uh, jurisdictions have only legalized assisted suicide. So Victoria State in Australia, just assisted suicide. Uh, all of the states in the United States that have legalized this, just assisted suicide. Internationally, what you see is that in Canada, for example, there is a small portion of doctors that have agreed to participate in this process. So over there, you've got about 130 doctors from across the entire nation of Canada that will be willing to administer this. Uh, even within that 130, there is a number, uh, just over 20, that, that would be uh, willing to be the second doctor assessing, but they won't participate in actually uh, releasing the lethal dose. Uh, most probably a small group within New Zealand that will be willing to do this and the average doctor-patient relationship will be quite short. So again, is this a strong enough um, safeguard for a doctor to assess coercion within that context? Not only look at what is within the Act, but look at what is not in the Act. So uh, every other jurisdiction that have le has legalised a uh, form of this have what you call a cooling off period. So that's a certain number of days between when that application is made uh, to when, the, when that person can have it administered. So uh, generally speaking, it's somewhere between 9 to 15 days cooling off period. Uh, in our law, it doesn't, it's not included. It's not in there. I looked overseas in Oregon and Washington, they have some really interesting reviews at the end of every year, they produce a report, uh, their questions to those applying for this is very thorough, and one of the questions they ask is, what are the, the primary reasons behind you asking for this um, medication or this treatment? The number one motivational factor uh, that people chose to take this was that uh, they, they felt less able to engage in activities that were enjoyable in life.
That was over 90% of people said that is why they wanted this treatment. Uh, other factors included loss of dignity, uh, feeling that they were a burden on family, friends, society, 59%. And that pain motivation was actually down at 30%, quite low on the list. So again, I just encourage you, look into this. Think hard, somehow get to that point where you can, you can lay aside some of your personal uh, struggle with the concept and just really try and analytically look at the law and test if this is the right one. Uh, again, encourage you, if you want more, there's plenty of good stories uh, in the book that I've written. Um, please get a copy and enjoy the rest of this conversation and webinar. Thanks for listening.